I think if you break music down, I think people really fundamentally are drawn to rhythms. That's where all this stuff came from, is rhythm. And then I think other people might be drawn to the lyrics, and other people might be drawn to the melody and the soloing or the instrumentation. Maybe different people hear music differently, you know? But I think the fundamental of all of it is the rhythm and the groove. That rhythm is just what everybody's drawn to. It's a primal thing, you know? I think it's like, it's, you know, guy with a drum. I mean. That's it, you know? It's pretty simple. My name is Guthrie Trapp. I'm from Lillian, Alabama. Born and raised on the Gulf Coast, right outside Pensacola, Florida. I'm a guitar and mandolin player, living in Nashville, Tennessee. Lillian, Alabama is a very small town. I grew up doing a lot of sailing and horseback riding, stuff like that, and then I started getting the music bug around seven or eight, and then never looked back. I remember never having a babysitter, you know? And uh, my parents took me to all the music parties they went to. And um, I just was exposed to all this, this music from a young age. And my uncle was a self-taught musician. I really admired him. And, and I was exposed to a lot of different kinds of music, you know, bluegrass and acoustic music, and as well as some, you know, blues and rock and roll, some jazz and, and stuff like that. And I just was around it from, from a really young age. And, Started playing like blues harmonica when I was like seven years old, and then uh, eventually moved on to the guitar, and then slowly picked up the mandolin not long after that, and just kind of evolved from there. Well, I really looked up to my uncle, uh, Jerry Trapp. Like I said, he was a self-taught musician, and, and I would hang out with him after school, and we'd play, and him and his band would rehearse at my grandmother's house. When they'd take breaks, I'd pick up the electric guitar and start noodling around, picking out the same notes I heard on the harmonica that I was playing, kind of the blues licks and stuff, and then got into playing bluegrass and some flat picking, and, and uh, then picked up the mandolin and learned some stuff on that. And then progressed from there, you know, I learned from a lot of the local people around there. Everybody was giving me tips growing up. I was really lucky to, to, to grow up in a house my dad built out in the country, you know, a geodesic dome home that he built from scratch, you know. And it was, uh, it was a totally different way to, 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 to be raised down in that area. And, um, you know, but they were open to, to, to letting me kind of find my own path. And, and when I got hooked on music, I mean, they were thrilled to death. They were nothing but supportive through all of this and still continue to be to this day. I, I wouldn't be doing any of this without, without their unconditional love and support. It's been amazing. I played a lot of gigs in, in a lot of bars. The Floribama being uh, one of the most famous down there. And, one of the cool things about that area was the Frank Brown International Songwriters Festival. And that was like my link to Nashville even before I even ever thought about moving to that town. Uh, I had a lot of guys that were coming down there and seeing me year after year that I was sitting in with and stuff and even got to you know play music with guys like Red Lane and Hank Cocker and Mickey Newberry when he was you know kind of towards the end of his life he was on oxygen and stuff down there still playing and smoking and drinking it was just a really, really wild scene down there, but that link to Nashville with those songwriters, those guys were telling me, like, encouraging me, man, you need to move to Nashville, you need to move to Nashville. I remember one night about three o'clock in the morning, we were back in the pool room, and these uh, two guys came up, you know, they're big songwriters in Nashville. They, they kind of, you know, I was probably about 18, and they said, you know, Guthrie, you really need to think about moving to Nashville. And uh, I said, I looked at them, I said, what am I supposed to do, just pack my stuff and move? And they said, uh, yeah, we did it with a wife and three kids, you know? And I thought, well, okay. So then later on, you know, in my early 20s, I think I was 22 or something, I, I ended up moving to Nashville and got an apartment down on Music Row and slugged it out down on Broadway and, and um, ended up going down there and uh, hanging out with the Don Kelly band. You know, that was my first kind of like, uh, you know, I'd heard of those guys and I knew it was kind of a hotbed for, for guitar players to come through that band. 
so I went down there and, and uh, you know, I hung out for, you know, weekend after weekend after weekend. And, you know, I told him, hey, you know, if you need a sub, I know I can sub on this gig. It never happened. Finally, after a couple months of this, yeah, you know, I got up and sat in and ended up playing down there for like four years. And that led to, you know, a bunch of other gigs uh, with, like I said, with touring with Patty Loveless. And then that evolved into the Jerry Douglas gig, which lasted for, I don't know, probably five years and played on a couple of his records, uh, two of which I think were nominated for Grammys. Played on two of Patty's records, one of those won a Grammy. And uh, so stuff started happening. And then, and then uh, when Jerry's gig ended, I kind of decided that I wanted to stay in town for, you know, for and not take any um, big road gigs, you know, that was going to keep me out of town for a long time. So I stayed in town and kind of slugged it out and uh, formed a band with John Randall, Jesse Alexander, Mike Bubb, Larry Adam Manuick, and Jimmy Wallace called 18 South, which has been great. A lot of um, a lot of freedom to express our, all of you know all of our musical endeavors and the stuff that we really enjoy. And and then uh, I've you know, met these these new guys that I've really been having a lot of fun with, Sean Camp and uh, Tim O'Brien, who I've known forever. Lucky to, to be able to call him my friend and, and play with him a lot. And also Delbert McClinton, I've been working with him some, and uh, John Oates, who's been a great guy. As, you know, these guys are people that I respect musically, but also uh, I love hanging with them and, and we're friends. I'm getting ready to release my first record, which I'm really, really thrilled about. The name of the record is Pick Peace. Uh, this is a 10-song 10, 10 record, all instrumental. Proud to have Michael Rose on every track playing bass. Uh, Doug Belote and Pete Abbott are playing drums. Uh, Dan Sherrill's playing percussion on about five or six tracks. And i um, happy to have Reese Winans on uh, about two or three tracks as well. And. Um, it's a record that we just went in and played. I mean, you know, some of the stuff is pretty thought out and some of the stuff happened on the fly. Some stuff's one take. And um, uh, Mark Howard co-produced and engineered the whole thing. We did it at his studio, Signal Path in Nashville. And uh, he's an amazing guy, one of the most talented people I've ever been around and a great friend of mine. And I'm happy to, to uh, have him as part of it as well. I learned a lot from him making my own record. It's a lot different than playing on other people's stuff, you know, but, um, it was a blast. I learned a lot. I can't get, uh, I can't wait to get started on the next record. And now here I am. I mean, I've gotten to play with, a, you know, I would say the majority of my heroes growing up, you know. And it's just been amazing. I, I was playing a gig the other night and I got done and I, I was like, man, you know, I, I honestly feel like one day I'm going to wake up and, and this is all going to be a dream, you know. Oh,